I came home one day about a month ago now and tried turning on my PC, but it didn't turn on, so I looked to see what was wrong, and none of the aura lighting was on on my motherboard. I then spent about three to four hours trying to look up what to test to find the issue. This is a pre-built PC that I bought as I had no knowledge of parts in a PC or how to build one. So I tested the power supply, taking out the power switch connector and tried jumping it, as well as clearing the CMOS. And after none of that worked, I contacted ASUS and went through the same steps with them. They sent me an RMA. After completing the steps and sending them my original motherboard, I received a new one about a week and a half later. I installed that and went to turn it on and the aura lighting was there for a split second then disappeared. After that happened, I contacted ASUS again and told them what happened and I just assumed I got a faulty board. So I sent that one back as well. About a week and a half later, I received a new motherboard. I just installed it and there is still no aura lighting, but this time it didn't even appear for a split second. As I have received two motherboards from them and the issue is still persisting, I don't believe it's the motherboard anymore because there is no way I received two faulty motherboards, but I just don't know what else to look for and I don't have spare parts to test. This here is that viewer's broken gaming PC. And, uh, wow gone through two replacement motherboards already, still nothing. I know this can be difficult to grasp for some, but there are folks out there who just don't know much about gaming PCs. In fact, a majority of folks on planet Earth, I would wager, are not computer literate to that extent. They're not very hardware savvy. And when it comes to just technology in general, there's a lot of folks that don't really care to know how the technology works, they just want it to work. And that's why system integrators exist en masse today, especially in markets like the US and Europe. You just buy a PC, set it up, plug it in, and it works. It's about ease of use. I'm not trying to defend pre-built. Uh, if I could encourage you to build your own system, of course, I'm going to try that because, well, that's what I enjoy doing and it has saved me quite a bit of money in the past, but it's not for everyone. And despite the owner buying a pre-built, it, it's actually a pretty good looking one. It seems to have uh, fairly decent specs involved. He actually did a pretty good job swapping out motherboards. He did it twice. And uh, well, if what he's saying is true about his lack of tech know-how, I'd say he did a pretty darn good job. Now the description was admittedly a bit drawn out, but in a nutshell, he's replaced a motherboard twice because he couldn't get a system to post. He was using the Aura LEDs, the lighting baked into the case as kind of his reference point. And at this point, I don't believe it powers on at all. So we've got a completely bricked PC here and uh, well, hopefully we can fix it in this video. Are you ready? Sounds like the SpongeBob intro. Are you ready kids? Stay with me. If you're sick of seeing that same activate Windows watermark over and over, head on over to VIP SCD key, where they have Windows 10 and 11 Pro OEM keys at a fraction of the price of retail. Just see the secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window and say goodbye to the watermark. And be sure to use your offer code SKGS for that sweet discount. Hey there, and welcome to Fix or Flop. If you're new to this series, just know that everything CS do here is free of charge to the owners of the systems in question. We don't charge for labor or even replacement hardware for that matter. We can usually get uh, components free of charge from companies. And even if we have to dip into our own pockets from time to time, we still end up netting a profit on the back end by uploading videos like these to sites like YouTube. Your viewership at the end of the day is why we can continue doing what we're doing here. So thank you so much for clicking on the video and watching. We're gonna jump straight into this one. Again, it is a bit unfortunate that this apparently doesn't power on. Normally I'd have a portable monitor here. We're gonna get a reference point, see if we can match up what we're seeing in person with what the viewer describes. And if it doesn't power on at all, there's no reason to have a monitor here. So we've got power on at the rear. We're gonna try powering on up front. Ooh. Okay, it is in fact not powering on. Now, I, we are getting some sign of life from the back here, this power supply. It's a thousand watt GS unit from EVGA, I believe. It does sort of have a baked in green EVGA logo and uh, it is lit. So the power supply at least is telling us that it's receiving power from the wall. No, my power strip is not off. <laughs> so we know it's not a power issue on our side, but uh, yeah, this, this lines up exactly with what we were told by the owner, which in that sense is actually good news. Now in this instance, where a system outright refuses to power on, I like to start with the most obvious things and work my way back. Maybe we have a loose cable somewhere, maybe a component isn't slotted in all the way, Let's take a look. For starters, front IO down there, that's usually one of the uh, more obvious places to screw things up if you're not getting power at all. This is actually wired correctly, but we can bypass it by manually jumping the power pins. This 24 pin is seated correctly. And same goes for that 8 pin EPS up there. Although the wires themselves are a bit smushed there. Now you can't really see with my hand in the way. The shadows are a little too bright, but you can see these uh, 
Yeah, these wires are just pressed firmly against that fan up top. I am not a huge fan of this. No pun intended. And I suppose since this is a fully modular power supply, we should also check this side of things when looking at wiring. Uh, I'm gonna have to pull this unit out to get a better idea. I can't see anything in there. Cables look okay so far on this side. And while it does look like these aren't fully seated, I do think we're still making good contact. The clip is all the way inserted on the back sides of uh, these larger ones here. So uh, we can test one more time off camera, but I don't think that was to blame. That really is quite a shame. Some cases are still designed this way, but you can see there's really no way at all that I can pull this eight pin EPS cable out with this AIO insert. And again, it also doesn't help. This AIO is absolutely crushing that eight pin to the point where it might not be functioning properly. You can see where the coolers depress the insulation on these wires here. It's probably still okay, just not good practice long-term. It looks like there actually are issues. Not supplying five volts, which, I mean, that could, that could be a big issue long-term. And then also ripples are not great. Look at that, almost 150 millivolts on the primary 12 volt over that, almost 200 millivolts. This, I mean, this is at idle conditions here. Uh, not great at all. Now, is this enough to keep the system from powering on outright? I don't know the answer to that question, but I do know a way to find out. How's about a replacement power supply? This is gonna be a, a pretty straightforward swap and it'll let us know right away if we have an issue. At this point, normally I would use my like tried and true known working unit. This of course is a, is a brand new one from Be Quiet. This is a straight power 12,000 watts. It's equivalent in wattage to what he's currently running with the EVGA G5, uh, but this is an 80 plus platinum unit. Again, still fully modular and comes with a really great warranty. You can find this unit linked below if you are interested. My oh my, from this angle, she is looking super pretty. We wanna thank Be Quiet for being a continued product sponsor of this Fixer Flop playlist. Now, a quick word on how these product placements work. I haven't actually talked much about this. Uh, I, I do my best to disclose this as openly as I can every time we are actually paid for a placement like this. Uh, but the timing of it all is really down to what system needs what. In this case, the power supply that was originally in here failed across multiple fronts in our inline pass mark tester. And remember that tester is not bestowing any crazy wattage load to the unit. These are more or less idle conditions and it's still failing. Those problems could be exacerbated once the system is under a true load. And that's why I don't take any chances. If I see even one fail there, it's getting replaced and that's where this unit comes in. But if the original power supply hadn't exhibited those symptoms, I wouldn't be replacing it with this one. And the way that our deal with Be Quiet is structured is such that if the fixer flop build in question doesn't have any issues with say a power supply or a case or a cooler, you know, components that Be Quiet manufactures, then it will not have a product placement from Be Quiet. Our deal is actually flexible in that sense. And that keeps these organic. We only replace with, well, Be Quiet products in particular, if Be Quiet makes said product, and if the building question actually warrants a replacement. If the case, for example, had been a hot box and we were seeing temperature issues, I might have replaced the case. That would have been a product placement. And of course, I will always disclose that in these videos. You'll also see it doubled down in the description. Some channels don't double down and I don't think that's entirely honest. I think it's important to disclose in as many places as possible when something is being sponsored, say a link or a call out in a video. Right now, bets are about 50-50 that this actually does fix anything. Uh, part of me, is always gonna be doom and gloom when it comes to <laughs> swaps like these because uh, I mean, for a system to not power on at all, I'm thinking it, it could be more than uh, more than meets the eye. Now this is all just a, a bit tight in here. There we go, power supply is finally situated. But like I said earlier, since the previous power supply did not pass in our tester, this was going to be replaced anyway. Let's give this a shot then. The only thing we have changed up to this point is that power supply. I haven't even cleared the CMOS actually. I probably should have done that earlier, but given it wasn't powering on at all, I wasn't confident clearing the CMOS would do anything. Although we'll run through those checks if this doesn't work. So power on now. <laughs> what do you know? It was a bad power supply. I followed the hunch and you know, it actually paid off this time. At least it looks like it. We need to get our portable monitor. Ooh, actually, you know what? 
Maybe I spoke too soon. In my experience, this Dr. Debug code is never a good sign. Zero D could stand for something like a dead CPU, like a catastrophic failure, a defective socket, a memory issue, memory training issue, even a graphics card issue. I've seen a lot from this one code. Thankfully though, this motherboard has another set of debug LEDs. Right now we're stuck on the Amber DRAM LED. You'll also notice this DRAM to the left is not illuminated. We're supposed to see some shiny colors and whatnot, but uh, these look completely dead. Dead. Ah, you know what? And it could be because these memory modules are not slotted in all the way. So, uh, yeah, I think now they are. This one here off to the left also wasn't slotted in all the way. Yeah, that could definitely prevent your system from posting. And this likely stems from a bit of experience. The owner disclosed this earlier, no harm, no foul. Hopefully, I think these are still gonna work just fine. Most of us have been here at one point or another, right? And you're thinking that you've slotted the DRAM all the way into the slot, when in reality, a side is sticking up maybe. It, it, it's a lot of force that you've gotta to apply to each of these dims to get them to fully seat. So I kinda of don't blame them for this one. Lessons learned. Yes, yes, I am beating myself up a bit for missing obviously incorrectly slotted DRAM. I, I don't know how I missed that. I guess I was so focused on the cables stemming from the power supply because we weren't getting any power at all that I overlooked another obvious issue. That said, I do not think that the DRAM being half slotted the way that they were was preventing the system from powering on outright. I think we were dealing with two separate issues here. So even if I had fixed the DRAM to begin with, the system likely still would not have powered on on account of that faulty power supply. So uh, I, I wonder how I would have approached things if I had noticed the DRAM first. Maybe, I, maybe it would have confused me even more. Anyway, the fact is we are here now to the point where I think we can actually connect a screen and possibly get a post. I'm hoping that we don't see that zero D Dr. Debug code anymore. All right, so we've got power on. Looks like across the board, the DRAM is lighting up now. That's great. We still have a zero D debug code though. I don't know why that's popping up again. Is it still telling me that memory is, it is. It still says that there's an issue with memory and it wouldn't take this long to train. In fact, if it was training, it would probably cycle through a few different codes. Uh, What is, what is happening? By the way, the reason why that AIO is not on currently is because I forgot to plug it in. So that's, uh, that's better. But still nothing. We're still stuck on the DRAM LED. Do we need to replace memory as well? Maybe those modules were fried sitting kind of halfway in like they were. Only one way to find out. Let's try with a single known working stick of DDR4. And we'll power on once again. If this does not work, then I'm afraid we might have an issue with the CPU since two motherboards have already been replaced and we still had the same symptoms. Uh, I think, again, there was multiple things wrong with this to begin with. The power supply for one, the RAM for two. I'm hoping that the power supply didn't actually kill other things in this rig, which very well could be the case if this doesn't work. So here we go. Now I will say right off the bat, we're getting a series of debug codes, which is great. <laughs> That's actually a good thing. It means uh, that the board is running checks and so far so good. Come on, give me something. Post, come on, post, yes, all right. There it is. I know the glare is probably awful for you guys, but uh, there you can see the system has posted which is fantastic and a huge relief because so at this point we're, we're already gonna have to replace two things. But fortunately, those two things aren't very expensive and are relatively easy to replace. I mean, the power supply is a bit finicky just with all the wiring and such, but uh, you know, it beats replacing a motherboard or a CPU. It also posts with a second DIMM installed. That's great news. It means we aren't dealing with a dead memory channel or something along those lines. Now I did notice these front fans haven't lit up since the beginning and I'm not entirely sure why because I've checked wiring and it seems like everything is is connected where it should be. He's got his LED switch here wired to the front of the case, which is correct. And he's got all three fans plugged into the header. Now these are actually unified, like these are for fan RPM and for LEDs. Uh, so a single unified connector for each fan. You can see all three are connected. They're receiving power via this uh, SATA power cable. If I disconnect this, the fans turn off. So I know that that's good. 
But beyond this, there's not much else I can really do. It's possible this board just might be partially shot. And because this looks like a proprietary hub, it's not something I could just readily replace here. The good thing is though, at least the fan spin, that's the more important thing. If you wanted to swap these out with other functional RGB fans later, he definitely could. But the bulk of this rig is fixed and uh, that's the big takeaway here. We've got his hard drive reinstalled and connected to power. We get this right side panel reinstalled and here we are, a system that now loads straight into Windows without issue. And uh, the rig so far looks super healthy again. The only remaining problem is the lack of RGB in those fans up front, which is a bit disappointing. In fact, now that I think about it, it's possible that original power supply might have taken that out, at least that side of the fan stability from the hub because the hub might be relying on five volt power. It also could have damaged the memory, the original kit here, but it also could have been damaged just by, you know, not being slotted in all the way and being power cycled multiple times. So be very careful about your memory, especially if you're a first time builder. Yes, it's going to require a lot of force. Make sure that those are fully seated. You shouldn't see the golden fingers at the bottoms of these at all if they're fully slotted. Uh, it can be one way to tell. Also the retention clips, if you have either on one side of each slot or on both sides, those should be all the way in the upright position, locking that module in. It shouldn't you know, be easy to remove said module with those locking mechanisms upright. You have to pull them back to pull the dent out. Um, so just be careful about that. The power supply thing, that was just a fluke. Not sure what was really going on there. The EVGA G5s, I haven't heard too many like really bad things about them. Although I'm sure now that you guys are seeing this, I'm sure we'll see a flood of comments about issues with G5s or older EVGA G units. I've had a few issues with G3s in the past. I think they were G3s. Uh, they were just running very loud. The fan curves were not calibrated correctly and it was very annoying in the long run using uh, that unit. But uh, yeah, a bit of a shame there. Uh, also, again, could have taken other things, but at the end of the day, we have a system that now works again, loads into Windows, no problem. Looks really good, apart from the mismatched uh, RGB profiles in these Corsair Down Plats. <laughs> we could uh, fix those with the IQ software. But all in all, a system that works, mission, mostly accomplished. Now, if you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to let us know by giving this one a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Remember that if you have a broken system and you live in or around Orlando, Florida, and you like a chance to have it fixed for free, that link to apply is in the video description. Just be sure to include pictures, specifications, and a brief description of your problem. And we'll get back to you as soon as possible. So long as you are a central Florida local, or at least able to drive down, drop the system off and drive back down again to pick it back up. Consider subscribing if you have not already. Again, check out relevant links in the video description and I will catch you in the next one. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me.